So when it comes to stop start systems on a car, there's a raging debate as to whether it's a good thing. Just think about it. For many years, drivers have associated stalling the car with being stranded and having a problem. So the mindset has always been to keep the engine running at all times. So the car is ready to take you off when you need to. So it requires a bit of a change of mindset. Now they've introduced this stop start system, which effectively shuts the engine off. But there's a lot of myths, a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people have the belief that most engine wear are occurs when it starts. So surely a stop start system does a lot more damage and a lot more wear and tear to the engine. What about oil circulation? Is the battery getting more damaged? Is the starter motor itself going to be damaged more quickly through the constant stop starts? What about the turbocharger? Is that damaged with the constant stop start systems? What have manufacturers done or changed when they've introduced stop start systems? Or have they just used what was there before and put some clever electronics on it to provide you with a stop start system? And why do we even have stop start systems today? Well, this video is going to answer those questions. We're going to look into the myths and hopefully we'll have a lively debate in the comments section below about your feelings about stop start systems and whether they damage your engine or not. So what are the actual facts? Does stop start systems damage the battery? Well, manufacturers, as with most things associated with stop start systems, have looked at potential problems and they have engineered around them. So we're not using the same batteries in cars that we used to use many years ago. They're much higher quality. They can provide more cranking power. They can provide more of a reserve of power for when the engine is shut off and the alternator is not feeding current back into the battery. And some cars actually have two batteries now. If you've got stop start system, there's an auxiliary battery that's used to run the in-car electronics and another one to supply power to the starter motor. So the battery itself is over-engineered. It's a much higher capacity. They're very different from the batteries that we had of many years ago. So should we worry about stop-start causing damage on the battery? Well, not really. The car is just maintaining a charge. There's a very clever management system on the stop-start system itself that's going to prevent extra degradation to the battery just by only working the stop start system when there's sufficient current in the battery to start with. So does stop start damage the engine? Most engine wear occurs on startup. Well, that's true, but only when the engine is cold. Stop start systems do not work when the engine is cold. It requires the engine temperatures, the coolant, the oil temperatures to be up to a certain level before the stop start system starts cutting in. And the engine is generally not off long enough enough for the temperature to drop, for the oil to completely drain back into the sump and all the other issues that you would get from starting a cold engine. So if there was an extended period of the engine being off, the stop start system would restart the engine, keep the circulation, keep the heat going, keep everything working nicely. So inside the engines with stop start systems, they've redesigned the channels that flow the oil around. So it resists the flow of oil down into the sump. I think that's why a lot of garages overfill engine oil, they don't leave sufficient time for the old oil to drain out completely. And that really is something you need to be aware of on these modern engines. They're not designed to allow that engine oil to drain off very, very quickly. So when the engine oil has circulated, it's still there in the parts of the engine that need it the most. So you've got your engine rotating and it's suddenly stopping and then it's starting again. So with mechanical knowledge and physics, the act of starting and stopping something increases the wear and tear on it. So that is certainly true. And I'm sure people are going to argue that that's a big negative factor on stop start systems. Manufacturers have over engineered components associated with the extra wear and tear that is a result of having a stop start system. But also an engine wears while it's idling. The components within the engine are still rotating, they're still moving, they're providing heat and friction. So you can argue as well that the act of shutting that off is reducing the engine wear. So I think if we analysed it at microscopic levels, you'd probably find it's a swings and roundabout situation where the engine wear caused by stopping and starting outweighs the engine wear that was saved by not idling the engine for extended periods of time. But please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the wear and tear of the physical engine itself through the stop start system. And I know some people are more worried about the engine oil 
and the fact that fuel becomes contaminated in the engine oil when you've stopped and started an engine. So that's certainly a factor. Oil analysis will generally tell you what your engine is doing and different manufacturers have got different systems out there to mitigate these problems or reduce these problems. But do let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on it. Stop start wastes fuel. You use a lot of extra fuel starting an engine. Well, you don't use that much extra fuel starting an engine that is already warm. The gearing and the way the starter motor engages, the power the starter motor produces, starts the engine much more quickly than those age old starter motors. So it's not really an argument that the start and stop system is going to use up more fuel. And actually, it's saving fuel. There's been a number of studies that have looked at the environment environmental benefits of this. And they found that fuel consumption on cars used in urban areas that have a stop start system is generally about 5% better than cars without stop start systems. So again, that idling, that waste of fuel you would get just sitting there in traffic is saved. So any extra fuel that was used, just priming the engine, getting things going again initially, pales into insignificance. In my book, it's not really a factor to worry about. So turbos, you don't want to shut off a hot turbocharger. You need the flow of oil to it. But modern designs have incorporated water cooling systems in turbochargers. So a lot of turbochargers are water cooled and there is an electronic cooling system that just keeps a flow of coolant going through the turbo. So that prevents it from overheating. But bear in mind, you have got a button to switch off the stop start. So if you're doing a spirited drive, you've been at the high RPMs and you don't want the engine to shut off suddenly, you want to allow a little bit of time for the turbo to cool down, just switch off the stop start system. But manufacturers have actually designed the electronics in the stop start system very intelligently. So they don't want work when the engine is cold. Most of them won't work when the engine has been at extremely high temperatures or high RPMs of driving. It waits for you to get back down into those mid to low RPMs that is associated with urban driving and stop starting. If you do lots of repeated stop starts, again, the stop start system will disengage. And if the battery is starting to get low or the voltage is starting to drop, or there is a big drain, maybe it's summer, you've got the air conditioning on, you need more power in the car, the stop start system will actually shut off again and stop working. Does the starter motor wear out more quickly through the constant stop starting? Well, we've said already it's over-engineered. Now, talking to mechanics, years gone by before cars had stop start systems, changing the starter motor was quite a common fault. Most drivers would be going in at some point in their driving career to get a starter motor replaced. I've had one done myself. But now stop start has come in, you would expect that to increase, but it hasn't. It's less likely now for a car to go into a garage to have the starter motor replaced when there is a stop start system installed. And that's really because everything is over engineered. They've redesigned the starter motor. The engine starts much more quickly when it is warm on the stop start system. The way the starter motor engages, manufacturers have thought about all these aspects and reduced the potential for wear and tear on the starter motor. So in my experience, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. The starter motors don't wear out any more frequently than they used to before we had stop start systems. Does it kill the battery? Well, we've already said that it's the batteries are better designed. They have more cutty. Some cars have two batteries. So battery life is no longer reduced. Now, actually, if your stop start system has stopped functioning or stopped working, that can be an indicator of a problem in the car. Usually the battery, if the battery charge has dropped sufficiently low, the stop start system is not going to work. It, the intelligent electronics within that stop start system is going to work that out and prevent that further drain on the battery. So a refusal for your stop start system to work is often flagging up a potential problem there with the battery or the charge system. So that's something to investigate. So things have moved on. There was a problem with starting and stopping engines, but manufacturers have thought about this. They've mitigated those risks by over engineering the components that would be subjected to this extra wear and tear, the oil formulations, the way the oil flows and the way the stop start system has been designed are all there to improve the reliability of the car and the engine compared to a car that didn't have a stop start system originally. 
So I'd be very curious to know your thoughts about stop-start systems. Have you had to replace components due to the start-stop system? Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and you won't miss out on the content we've got coming out that help you to understand the mechanical workings of your car to get the best performance and the best reliability out of it. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.